Sophia Krishna! Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Samya Hassan Krishna. Uh, it's, you know, quite a long name, so you don't have to remember it. You must be thinking, um, what is this girl doing here? I'm from India. I, you know, I came all the way to Australia. Why? Because I wanted to meet Hugh Jackman. He's my love. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I fell for Wolverine. And uh, I came here to meet the superstar. But then got to know he won't live in Australia much. I was disheartened. And then, okay, fine, let me create my own star. You know, who can be with me and, you know. Yeah, so I'll be taking you to the journey of creating a star. Ooh. Yeah. So, you must be thinking, like, now you will be hearing news of SpaceX or NASA sending a lot of satellites, rockets to space. Why? Why? You know, have you ever thought that? <laughs> Why can't we do everything on Earth? Because we live here, right? Why should we go to space? <laughs> atmosphere. Wait, clouds? Yeah. You were right. Yeah. Atmosphere. Yeah, atmosphere. Yeah. There's this monster called atmosphere. This, you know, corrupts everything. So we need something, you know, to control the atmosphere. Some magic. Okay, do we have that magic? What do you think? Yes or no? Maybe. <laughs> yes, there is that magic and its name is Adaptive Optics. Oh. This is the system called Adaptive Optics which can kind of take out atmosphere when we see any object in the sky. This is a very simple system. No, it's not that simple. But what I find or I tell is, um, it, it basically works in you know getting better resolution. When I say resolution, like if two stars are very close to each other, with this system, you can actually see it being two rather than one. Yeah. How does this work? It basically uses some star. It uses a reference. Okay, I have a star, I know that star. It's a known star, and with that, it's gonna use the wavefront sensor. It's a kind of, you know, analyzer, basically. And after that, it tells the corrector. Okay, there's some problem, you know, I have a reference, and there's some problem with what we observed. And this corrector gonna make that correction. It's basically comparison and correction. It's that simple. Okay, now you know for that to work we need a star. But what if there's no star in the sky? Oh. Right? And what if you want to observe Saturn and there's no star near that? You cannot know what's going on in that atmosphere. So what do we do? Put Hugh Jackman up there. <laughs> <laughs> in that case, creativity of human comes in. Like, you know, human is good. So when we don't get from God whatever we want, we create our own. In the same way, we're going to create our own star. And that is created with the help of laser. So we call it as lazy guy star. Okay, so there are two techniques of creating laser guide stars. One is relay, where we just propagate a laser for like 20 kilometers and you know get the scattering and try to create it. The problem with this is it's just 20 kilometers. What about the atmosphere above 20 kilometers? Right? It won't have a good correction factors. So there's one more technique, which is sodium guide star. Oh. We use almost like 90 kilometers of atmosphere wow. and we use the layer called mesosphere. That's where a sodium exists. Okay, and let's know a little more about this layer. You know, this is the Earth's atmosphere. Don't read everything, just concentrate on mesosphere. Okay, uh, there is the sodium. 
And can you guess who puts the sodium there? It's in the picture, just in the picture. Asteroids. Almost. Meteoroids. <laughs> yeah. Meteoroids put sodium there. So whenever there is a meteoroid shower, there will be abundance of sodium. And we create good guide star during that. And this layer is it's more like a I feel uh, it's more like a, a female, like you know, it's very unpredictable. <laughs> really, for no reason. It changes every hour, every day, every month, every week, yearly, from place to place. So it's hard to create, you know, in such condition a star, but still we manage to create one. So this is how a layer looks like and you know it could be of any shape any shape but one thing about this layer is it has a maximum density at the center at, at 90 kilometer and rest it's gonna decrease and, and you can see in the left corner that's when when there was a large burst happens the sudden raise in the peak okay now let's move on from the layer and see okay can we just have one laser guide star for one telescope? May not be. We can have more than one. One laser. You can see this is an example where it was created in Chile, uh, where they used uh, one laser and they split it into four to create more laser guide stars. And, and after that, there are many places in the Earth where they are using this uh, laser guide stars and they have created. There are a lot of countries already been using it. And is there Australia anywhere in here? No. Oh. Right. Do we need one in Australia? Yes. Where do you want it to be? Yeah. Right here. Right here. <laughs> yes. That's going to happen. Yay. It's going to happen in one strong though. Yeah. We are almost, we are very close to creating one. And this is where uh, the white thing you can see, mm -hmm. uh, where we'll be propagating a laser. It's called as a launch telescope. And it's mounted on the primary mirror. And that's how we're going to shoot. If you're up in Canberra, I mean, in Stromlo, and you see this tomb, and you would, you know, you should remember, that's where a guide star, first guide star of Australia will be created. Wow. Yeah. And after that, you know, uh, once it's been created, we use some time. Uh, studying the layer and that guide star will be used in a project to track a space debris. No, yeah, that's great. And then what I would say is, uh, I don't know. Anyways, uh, Arab Optics <laughs> is being used in astronomy for like 30 years now. And recently the Nobel Prize winners who use this technology, they, they got it. So it's pretty much being using it and it still requires lot of development and it's going on and I just want you to keep looking for creation of first Australian kite star in the news. Thank you. That's going to be exciting. Very bright lasers spiking up into yeah, the sky. Yeah. That's going to terrify most people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but that'll be fun to terrify most people. Ah, all right. My question for you is, if the mesosphere is full of sodium, if a giant alien ate Earth, would it taste salty? <laughs> you don't need to answer that. <laughs> it's probably best you don't, because it might be good. I need to take I need to take you to task for one other thing about women being unpredictable because is anyone here in a long term relationship with a man? And can they be randomly unpredictable and weird from week to week and day? My wife's nodding. I demand the right to be unpredictable as well. Alright. Uh, moving right